Hi folks. So what we have here today is a first generation Schlage Everest uh, small format interchangeable core. A lot of people don't realize that uh, the Everest mechanism was originally uh, introduced for uh, interchangeable core. Um, and really Schlage made very few changes between this version and the later versions that they have in uh, mortise, rim, cylinder, and uh, large format interchangeable core, or full-size interchangeable core. Um, basically, the, the biggest difference is, or the two biggest differences, are that one, because this is a uh, small format interchangeable core, it actually uses uh, standard uh, SFIC pinning, specifically the uh, best A2 system, and uh, the one other big difference is that the location of the check pin is slightly different from later versions because this is the first generation. Uh, it's still uh, under that uh, undercut on the bottom right of the keyway, but instead of being all the way at the back of the lock, it's actually all the way at the front. And maybe if we get the light just right, you can almost make out the check pin hanging around right there. Anyway, uh, let's see if we can get into this. So first thing, like all of their uh, Everest, we're going to use our check pin tool. Get that seated in there. Get the camera to actually focus. Uh, we're going to, again, be able to use the thick Peterson pry bar because of that fairly wide keyway. And uh, again, because that keyway is still fairly open, uh, we're going to use a thick Peterson hook. Let's see what we get. Okay, one is loose and springy. Two is nice and stiff. One gave us a little bit of a click. Three is quite stiff and gives us a click. Four, a little bit of resistance, but no. Click five, extremely stiff. Hopefully, we're not caught up on some warding. Uh, six is quite stiff, so we're probably just sitting on pin five now. Oh, and oh, and we've got it to uh, control. You can see a uh, seven pin cylinder only populated with six pins. And uh, what we can do now is because I have a whole bunch of these cores, we're going to take them apart so we can see what's inside these things. So we'll get picks out of the way. Yeah, we're only three minutes in. Good. And going to get our rejector tool, keep it in a little hole, press down and reject all those pins. should now be empty. There we go, you can see all the chambers are empty now. And let's take a look at what's actually in there. see, looks like we have six pin stacks uh, with one set of master pins. Gotta stop getting my fingers in the way here. Uh, the springs and caps as usual are 
going to be all messed up from the ejector. But that's okay, because we can replace those. They are very, very cheap. So you can see the pins there, nothing super special. And we're going to put that aside, because what is probably going to be more interesting is what's going on in this core. Zoom out a bit of it. Right, so... Uh, this one I've already pulled the C-clip off, uh, so we should, now that it's got no pins in it, be able to just push out the plug, there we go, and actually the check pin came out as well, and then the Control sleeve will drop out the back, and finally we have the uh, body, or the outer shell. And if we take a close look at all three of these, you can see that there's a notch in the control sleeve and in the outer body. That corresponds to this extra hole off to the side of the keyway. And that hole is where the check pin and spring go. And actually, uh, if we're looking at it this way, tweezers, the check pin, see if we can get a nice close up on that. Uh, so the check pin actually sits like this in the keyway. This rounded bit here is to match the radius of the outer shell and uh, the shear line. And then these two little stepped portions would actually stick out into the keyway. And that little tiny spring there is what pushes that out when the key is removed. So... Thank you very much uh, for joining me today, and until next time, have fun and happy picking.